I'm going to start by taking you back to 2002. I just finished my first game, and armed with a newfound understanding of games programming, I decided to push myself a little bit further. Emulating one of my gaming heroes, Sonic the Hedgehog, I kicked off what began a career-long obsession, a platformer engine that kept on growing. The premise was simple, and it all stemmed from one brainwave. How I could control characters using acceleration and deceleration to give fluid and natural movement. The original game got no further than a one-level demo, but I returned to it a year later, 15 years old and armed with another brainwave. All that trigonometry I'd learnt in school could be put to good use. Namely, a consistent mechanism for running up slopes and doing loop-the-loops. I didn't call it this back then, but I guess it was the outline of a physics engine. The game was originally imagined as a cross between the racing and platformer genres, but the design outline changed fairly frequently as I came up with new ideas. I also constructed a level editor to help me build the levels, but the game fizzled out, mostly because I had little sense of direction. I clearly enjoyed adding game features more than I enjoyed building the levels themselves, and I eventually moved on to new projects instead. What's more, the Blitz Basic toolset I'd stuck with for so long was fairly limited in what it could do. I've always been fascinated by 2D platformers from the post-16-bit era, including Mischief Makers on the N64. Despite the genre having dwindled in popularity on the new 3D consoles, Treasure saw the new technology and used it to make a bold, imaginative, and explosively varied platformer that wouldn't have been possible on the old 16-bit consoles. I felt a similar wave of inspiration in 2007, when I discovered XNA, and the Sonic-inspired game engine came back into my mind. Think of all the things I could do, zooming in, zooming out, rotating unlimited numbers of sprites at once, and it was all object-oriented, meaning I could easily manage hundreds of game objects from the same core functions. This was all so trivial as to be overlooked by most hobbyist game developers of the time, but I saw nothing but possibilities. Working on the engine on and off during university, I ended up with the bare bones of what I intended to be my dream platformer. There's a controllable camera that can be given scriptable commands, and follow certain targets based on triggered events. Enemies can also be given scripts and rules to follow, and can spawn based off of given triggers and cues. Building on my previous experience, platform physics were more precise and malleable, so loops and slopes could be constructed in all kinds of weird shapes. Enemies run off the same core code as players, meaning I can attach different behaviours with minimal effort. And, of course, all this was ready to be implemented into an in-game level editor, albeit one that never got made. Most of this was designed so that set pieces could be strung together. For example, I had always imagined a section with a suspension bridge that got blown up from the middle. The player would have to run up the bridge as it flew upwards and leap from the top. Rather than being a fan project for another series, my final design was very much my own. I took the fluid motion and potential for incredible stunts that the engine provided, and planned to use them to blend arcade-style combos with platforming action, encouraging players to perform superhuman feats to proceed. What exists never really reached this ambitious dream, a lesson in itself, but the process of putting together this unfinished behemoth was an invaluable crash course in coding 2D visual effects, and in object-oriented design. What does exist, you could call a physics system. The reality is that the game's physics are actually relatively simple. It's all about velocities and angles, vectors, detecting and resolving collisions accurately. There's no consideration of mass, which means no momentum and no energy. It's not about smoke and mirrors, rather about choosing what's required for the game and what's unnecessary. Sonic games, for example, 
feature all kinds of unrealistic feats without feeling broken. Instead, the player feels like he has the power to do the impossible. Of course, making a game with unrealistic physics that doesn't feel broken is a challenge in itself. The player needs to feel that at any time, the consequences of his actions are entirely predictable. There's two ways to do this. One is by making them physically accurate, consistent with the real world. This includes the slopes, and a sense of acceleration when running or falling. The other is to be simple and binary, and keeping that consistent in itself. You're either fast enough to run on that ceiling, or you're not, and you fall. Homing attacks feel natural by the same logic, even if they're physically impossible. This is because players know exactly what will happen if they press the jump button again in mid-air. So what happened to the project in the end? To put it simply, it was way too ambitious for me to tackle on my own. Even if all the code was in place, drawing all the visual assets, the animations, the scenery, the bosses and the enemies, it would be such a massive project before it could even come close to how I'd imagined it. And there was no guarantee that the game that would result would be fun at all. All I had to go on were the pictures in my head. But I have no regrets about leaving the project behind for now. I have the opportunity to explore new ideas, and to follow them through right to the end. I'm enjoying working on more concise and focused projects that really get to the nitty gritty of what makes a game work. The engine, of course, will live on. Everything I've learned from the process will still be with me and help shape my games to come. This includes the design principles I explored, the coding techniques, the physics implementations, and even the large chunks of code which I already reuse in other projects. Ever since its humble beginnings in 2002, the game engine hasn't been about one specific game. It's been about building up on existing knowledge to explore and to learn something new. And that, surely, is the most important thing. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more about my work, feel free to take a look at my website. My latest game, Greedy Bankers, is available now for iPhone and iPod Touch.